Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. freezing. I don't know about the rest of the world. It's warmer here than a lot of places, but I'm cold. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, good morning, everyone. Afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. Um, oh, good. Joey's saying good morning t to me, and he's like 10 feet over there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cold everywhere. Um, I'm not thrilled with it, especially going out. <laughs> Florida has iguanas falling out of the trees. I've heard that, um, which I think is pretty funny. Poor guys. They get cold. <laughs> they get cold and they can't move. They basically freeze in place. Um, so anyway, um, uh, I took a few days off, so I apologize for being away from our Facebook community, but uh, back ready to roll this morning. And Gwen told me that she's been getting a lot of questions from people regarding constipated kitty cats. And this used to be something I saw a lot in practice, particularly before we started really teaching cat owners how to feed their kitty cats. And once you know how to feed your cat appropriately, um, you deal with this a lot less. And uh, frankly, I managed to cure a lot of cats in my practice just by changing what they eat. So um, we look at this differently in traditional medicine than we do in Chinese medicine therapy. So um, I'm gonna, I have an article here that was put out um, by traditional medicine um, and it gives us some good statistics. So I thought I would at least cover those. Constipation, obstipation, which basically is the same thing. They're just totally obstructed. Uh, and megacolon, which is when the large intestine basically stretches out. So the, the normal diameter of the kitty cat large intestine might be about like that, but some of these cats, it literally is this huge stretched out um, limp organ that's not working anymore. Uh, can be observed in cats of any age, sex, or breed. However, most cases are observed in middle-aged with a mean of 5.8 years. Male cats, 70% of the time. Female, 30% of the time. Domestic short hair, 46% of the time. Domestic long hair, 15%. Siamese, 12%. Um, and so then that leaves us 27, 46, yeah, another 35% that's kind of sp spread across the breeds. Affected cats are usually presented for reduced, absent, or painful defecation for a period ranging from days to weeks or months. Can you imagine going months? The, those are pet parents who are not paying attention, I can tell you that. Um, some cats are observed making multiple unproduct unproductive attempts to defecate in the litter box and with uh, cat owners, very commonly, this is confused with urinary tract obstruction where they're sitting in the litter box straining and not producing anything. So it, it's always an emergency when you see your cat straining in the box. It might be a urinary blockage, which can be deadly very quickly within 24 hours to 48 hours uh, versus a uh, bowel obstruction. So um, dry, hard feces can be observed inside or outside the litter box, but occasionally these cats actually are presented for diarrhea. 
because what happens is you've got this large fecal ball that's stuck in place and only a little bit of liquid or uh, blood tinge liquid from the cat straining and breaking blood vessels. That's what you're seeing in the box because that's all that can get by. And then you've got this big kind of boulder sitting in the, in the middle of the, the road uh, and things can't get by it. So um, sometimes the, the cat is presented for diarrhea and that's not the problem. They actually have the opposite problem. Um, prolonged inability to pass stool may result in other systemic signs, including uh, stopping eating, being very lethargic, having weight loss, and vomiting. These cats will get dehydrated very quickly, and uh, that's part of the problem that's contributing to the problem that they're having. So, um, impaction of the colon is a consistent physical examination finding in these cats. Other findings will depend upon the severity uh, and cause of the constipation. So dehydration, weight loss, debilitation, abdominal pain, mild to moderate lymph node enlargement inside the uh, abdomen. Uh, it can be so severe in such cases as to render it difficult to differentiate impaction from um, cancer or some other problem in the, in the abdomen. Cats with constipation due to nerve damage may have other signs of nervous system failure, such as urinary and fecal incontinence, regurgitation due to megaesophagus, so that's a dilated esophagus as well, um, decreased tear production, prolapse of the third eyelid, uh, slow heart rate can also go along with these cats. Uh, these cats do need to be sedated nine times out of ten, to, uh, no, I'm going to say 99 out of 100. Um, to relieve these impactions, they need to have fluids, and you have the the veterinarian needs to be very careful in doing this because it's so easy to get a rectal tear, which will be deadly for the kitty cat. Um, so, a recent review suggests that 96% of cases of obstipation are accounted for by um, megacolon, that dilated colon of unknown origin. So, we call it idiopathic, means we're idiots, we don't know what's going on. So we don't know why it's being caused. Uh, pelvic canal stenosis. So if the cat has ever been, had trauma to the hind end and had a broken pelvis and then when it heals, the opening is narrowed, a lot of times that is a problem. So they start to get even just a slightly large fecal ball and it can't pass and then you've got a, a major obstruction. Um, and then there's something called Manx sacral spinal cord deformity. So those are those tailless kitty cats, and a lot of those have a deformed um, uh, spine in the sacrum, in the pelvic area. Um, so uh, this is very, very difficult to treat. And from a Chinese medicine standpoint, and this is, was the turnaround for me in getting these cats um, to stop doing what they were doing, it's a blood and yin deficiency. So we've got nerves that aren't functioning as well, but basically what we have is a very, very dry large intestine. So if you take kitty cats and you put them on dry kibble, which is totally not what they should be eating, they're in a constant state of dehydration. So their stool becomes very hard and dry. And even though they're drinking a lot to try to make up for that lack of moisture in their diet, they never catch up. So First thing we want to do with these cats is we want to get them on a high moisture diet. Stop feeding them dry kibble if that's what has been uh, being used for them. So absolutely Im important to do that. We want to increase moisture intake for these cats. Some of them it might require giving them some sub-Q fluids for a period of time while we're getting them readjusted. Um, so symptoms that you might see, the cat might also have dry flaky skin because that goes along with a blood and yin deficiency. Uh, could be a weak or geriatric patient. Um, according to traditional medicine, the mean age is 5.8 years, but I did see this more often in older cats, particularly those with chronic kidney disease because they're in a state of dehydration as well. Uh, the tongue on these guys is going to, be, it could be pale, or it could be red depending on whether they are more blood deficient or have more heat present in the body and the tongue will be dry. Um, and there is an herb for this and it's called Donggui Kongrong, D-A-N-G-G-U-I-C-O-N-G-R-O-N-G. It is very effective. I used, it. the biggest problem is getting it into kitty cats. Cats don't like to take herbs. But what it does is it nourishes and moves the blood. It moistens and purges the large intestine. 
Promotes appetite because these guys don't want to eat, can't blame them. Resolves the food stasis, so we use that bao he uh, quite often for food stasis. It moves the chi and relieves pain, and it also drains heat. So great herbal combination for these kitty cats. So I found in my practice that when I would get these cats with chronic constipation problems, if we put change their diet to a high moisture diet that was species appropriate, we put them on this herb, we could get 95% of these cats turned around in a fairly short period of time. Um, certainly we have to relieve the obstruction at the time when they're originally presented, but then we want to keep them from doing that again because most of these cats are chronic offenders with this. Um, so pretty important, uh, acupuncture can be very helpful, particularly electroacupuncture for these guys as well. Sub-Q fluids, like I said, might be part of your traditional um, therapy that could be used along with it. So in my opinion, unless the cat has a pelvic obstruction from a previous trauma, there's really no reason for kitty cats to be chronic offenders with this problem because it is so treatable. And um, you know, sometimes the biggest problems are getting the cat to agree to give up his kitty crack with all the carbohydrates and, and no moisture in it because cats get pretty stuck on, um, on what they like to eat and they definitely become addicted to the carbs and starches and the dry kibble. So hope that helps those of you with kitty cats and uh, hopefully we can keep them on diets that will um, be more species appropriate for them and eliminate the problem. So everybody have a wonderful day. See you at some point tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs>